Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with chili garlic paneer. That's right, not only am I gonna show you a delicious and easy recipe for this very versatile Indian cheese, but as an added bonus, I'm gonna show you how to make your very own homemade paneer, which will cost you half as much and be twice as good as the stuff at the store. So we got a lot to get to, so let's get to it. And the first thing we'll do is put together this very simple chili garlic marinade, which starts with a whole bunch of freshly minced garlic, to which we will add a very generous amount of shiratsa, or of course the hot chili sauce of your choice. And once we've squirted in as much as we think we can take, we will cool things down with some plain yogurt. And I'm using Greek, since apparently they don't sell Indian yogurt. And then for some much needed acidity, we'll go ahead and squeeze in one lemon. Although if you wanted, you could use lime. So we'll say that's dealer's choice. And then we'll finish up with that classic Indian spice blend known as garam masala. And if you can't find that, just use the best curry spice powder you can get your hands on. Oh, and we'll also need a couple nice big pinches of salt. And that's it. We'll get in there with a whisk. And we'll mix this until everything's nicely blended. At which point it's ready for our paneer. And before we get to the homemade stuff, let's fry up a batch using paneer from the store, which is what you see here. And yes, you can find it. It's pretty much in every big grocery store these days. And as far as what size and shape to cut this into, pretty much anything goes. Although I think we want these pieces to have a minimum thickness of about a quarter inch to a maximum of about maybe a half inch. So I went ahead and cut this block into quarters and then turned them up on their side and cut them exactly in half allegedly. And once we do get those cut, we will transfer them into our marinade, and we will toss those around until they're thoroughly and very thoughtfully coated. Oh, and by the way, the reason I'm doing the store-bought first is because I really wanted to see the difference between the homemade and the commercial. And oh, what a difference it was. But anyway, once those are coated on both sides, we'll go ahead and wrap this in plastic, and then pop it in the fridge for about four hours. All right, you could probably go a little shorter, and definitely longer, Maybe even overnight. Although I've never actually done that, so no guarantees. But regardless, we will finish these up by pan frying them over medium high heat and a couple tablespoons of clarified butter, or if you have some, some ghee, which is Indian clarified butter. And we will simply sear these on both sides for about two minutes or so, or until we have some rather severe caramelization. And because of that fairly wet marinade, when you first put these in, there's gonna be a good amount of steam released and probably a little bit of splattering so even though I never really film with it, don't be afraid to use one of those splatter guards. Although the good news is eventually most of that moisture evaporates and the steam and the splattering will dissipate. And like I said, we'll cook those for a couple minutes per side until they're hopefully beautifully brown like this. Oh, and if you see spots that aren't as hot as others, like this one in the middle, don't be afraid to move that to a hotter spot in an attempt to get as even a browning as possible. And that's it once those get brown to our liking. We'll go ahead and pull them out of the pan, and we will plate those up and begin our analysis. Oh, and Michelle thought these were a little too dark, and because we're married, I agreed. But after tasting the first one, I actually thought they were perfect. Okay, when you char a surface, even partially, you end up with a little bit of bitterness, which I think accentuates the sweetness from the chilies and the garlic. And I really did absolutely love the flavor of this. And yes, as you might guess, these are very garlicky and very spicy. But I did not think it was over the top, especially if you're going to eventually serve these with a nice cool yogurt dipping sauce, which you're going to see later on. So as far as the taste and appearance goes, I was very pleased, which brings us to the texture, which I would describe as firm but very nice. But anyway, that's our chili garlic paneer using the store-bought stuff. Now let's try it with homemade cheese, which we'll start by adding a half gallon of cold fresh milk into a stock pot preferably one with a nice thick heavy bottom so it doesn't scorch. And besides milk, the only other thing you need to make paneer is lemon juice. Although as you can see, I am gonna add one optional ingredient, which is a couple tablespoons of plain yogurt, which I think produces a paneer that's maybe slightly richer. So that's the software. As far as the hardware goes, you're definitely gonna need to line a colander with either cheesecloth or a large thin cotton towel, which is my personal preference. But anyway, we'll go ahead and line some kind of strainer before we start. And by start, I mean place our milk on medium high heat. And the reason I'm using medium high, even though a lot of recipes call for medium, 
is because I am using a nice thick bottom pot, so I'm not really in any danger of my milk burning on the bottom. But if you're using a cheap thin pan, it might, in which case it's probably safer to go with medium. But either way, we're definitely going to want to stir this as it heats up. And what we're shooting for is to bring this up to almost the simmering point. And you can just do this visually, but I like to check with a thermometer, and I'll shoot for something between 195 and 205. And right here, I was getting close. So I let that go for a few seconds more. And then what we'll do once we reach our target temperature, we'll reduce our heat to low, and we will quickly add our yogurt if we're using it, as well as about two or three tablespoons of our lemon juice, which may or may not be enough. So make sure you have some more on hand. And we'll go ahead and start stirring with our spatula. And what we're looking for to happen is the curds to separate from the whey. And if that doesn't happen after about 30 seconds or so, we'll go ahead and splash in a little more lemon juice and continue stirring, which is what I did. And if everything goes according to plan, a few seconds later, what used to look like a pot of milk will look like this. And just as soon as it does, we want to turn off the heat. And we'll dump in about three or four cups of cold fresh water, which is basically going to instantly stop the cooking process and cool everything down a little bit. And then very carefully and very safely, we will pick that up and head to our strainer and we will slowly pour that in where we will let it cool and drain for about five minutes before eventually gathering up the ends of our cloth so we can squeeze out the rest of the way. But please be careful because things are still gonna be pretty hot. And if it is too hot to squeeze, you can rinse it off with a little cold water, but I'm afraid of rinsing off any flavor. Plus not to brag, but my hands are kind of tough so I was fine, but the point is be careful. And that's it, we'll bring that over to our cutting board and we can squeeze out any of the remaining whey. And then before we press this, let me go ahead and unwrap it so you can get a look. And yes, at this point, it pretty much looks exactly like ricotta cheese. And we could use this in its fresh form as a substitute for that, but we're not. We're gonna kind of press and shape this into a disc, ideally about two inches high. And as we're doing this, one thing to pay attention to we don't want to end up with any bunched up cloth or cheesecloth underneath or on top of our cheese because once pressed, we want a nice smooth surface and hopefully a uniform thickness. So we'll make sure to shape that as shown. And then once we have that situated, I like to lay something flat over the top, which is going to help distribute the weight of whatever we use on top of this to press it down, which for me is going to be this cast iron panini press, which I've renamed paneer press since I can't really remember the last panini I made. And then what we'll do after weighting that down is let it sit just like that for one hour, at which point we can remove the weight and unwrap it. And we'll take a look at what is now officially paneer. And since we didn't let our cloth bunch up, we have a beautiful smooth surface on both sides. And even though I am gonna take a taste now, what we really wanna do before we use this is wrap it up and put it in the fridge and let it chill thoroughly so that it really firms up, which makes it easier to cut and work with. But you know what? I was hungry, so I took a bite. And it really was amazing. Lee Bland. And that's because paneer is not made with any salt. So to actually enjoy this, we'll want to season it up, which I did here simply with a little pinch of salt. And of course, that chili garlic marinade we made will do the same thing. And that was so, so much better. So I was very happy with this, except for one thing. Okay, I should have made my disc of cheese much thicker before I pressed it down. So believe it or not, I made another batch, which is what I'm gonna cut up now, so I can taste some of this homemade stuff with that exact same chili garlic application. Oh, and remember when I said you should let it chill thoroughly in the fridge before you try to cut it up or use it? Well, I didn't do it with this one either, which is why I think that little bit in the center stuck on the knife and kind of crumbled off. But I wasn't mad, because I'm gonna eat that. And because I did thinner squares for the commercial paneer, for this homemade stuff, I decided to do thicker rectangles. And I will spare you the redundant video footage, but I went ahead and marinated that and pan fried it exactly the same way. And in the pan, this was virtually identical to the store-bought version. Okay, there might have been a little more moisture, but it pretty much behaved the same way, including the fact that the one in the center didn't brown as quickly. So just like the first batch, I moved things around, and eventually I plated it up. Only this time I served it with a very simple yogurt dipping sauce and I sprinkled everything with some chili flakes. And of course I'm gonna include the ingredients for that in the written recipe. 
Although all it was was yogurt, cilantro, and jalapeno with a little squeeze of lime. But anyway, I dunked a piece in and took a bite, excited to compare it to the store-bought version. And it was, my friends, superior in every way. All right, it had a fresher, milkier taste. And while the texture was similar, it was definitely more tender and seemed to be a shade moister, yet it still held its shape beautifully, which really is the magic of paneer. Okay, it's one of those rare cheeses that you can fry without it melting, which is good, because as most health experts would agree, people these days are not eating enough fried cheese. And while I love the cold herbaceous yogurt, this would be great with just some squeezed lemon or lime over the top, or whatever sauce or dip you think spicy, garlicky fried cheese would be good in. So feel free to experiment. I mean, you are after all the Greg Kinnear of how to eat your chili garlic paneer. And speaking of as good as it gets, this really was amazing and would make a fantastic snack anytime. But probably my favorite use of homemade fresh paneer would be to cube it up and add it to a curry, which is exactly what I'm doing here. And sorry, there's no recipe for this. It's just something I whipped up with a bunch of odds and ends. But anyway, the point is, if you're not into pan frying, don't. Just cube it up and add it to any of your favorite curries instead of the meat, or with the meat if you swing that way. And you'll be enjoying one of the world's great simple pleasures. But whether you simmer this in a curry, or you're in more of a hurry and just fry it up in a pan, no matter what you do with it, I really do hope you give it a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.